Now, a great example of a conditional statement and evaluating a conditional statement can come through something known as approximation. And there's a reason for this. Well, again, if we think about just this magical term and this picture that I grabbed offline, it's that a value is nearly but not exactly correct. And if we think about that for a second, oh, well, that's AI. That's the circle thing that he showed in the last video. But we can get super, super crazy and use it with decimals. The entire idea is that we're dealing with floating point numbers or we're dealing with decimal places with some of our mathematics. And the problem is that I could have, for example, a number that just continues to trail on into infinity. And the problem is, again, let's think about this from just more of a resource perspective. I have a finite place or a finite amount of memory, right? This maybe only has two gigs of space, two gigabytes of space. It can't store an infinite number of decimal places, and it just physically cannot. The reason why this is important is when we start to think about something more like this. 0 0.6. All right, we all can see it seems very finite in nature, but the problem is that that still has tons and tons of zeros going to infinity. And so as a result, there is actually a problem with almost every programming language out there known as the floating point error. The entire idea is if I take, say, 0 0.1, and even for our sake, let's go ahead and throw this out there. So x is going to equal 0 0.1. OK. Now. What's going to happen if I subtract x minus 0 0.1? I get 0 0.9. Okay. Mr. Guida is clearly a uh, liar uh, and a thief and a charlatan. Uh, no, but let's just continue rolling with this for a second. Let's say uh, 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1. Okay, all right. He's uh, still a heretic and a charlatan and all of those other bad things, but... 0 0.1 one more time. <gasps> what is this? That's not right. You know, that's not how I was taught math, right? It should be 0 0.7. But as you can clearly see, it is 0 0.7 trailing a ton of zeros, 1. Because again, this is really getting down to like the ones and zeros inside of binary, inside of your computer. And the problem is that at some point, Python had to cut it off. And it's not just that I did it with a uh, zero point, uh, you know, I did it with a bunch of those 0 0.1s. Okay, maybe I did, but uh, more to my point is that you could get these zero point, you, these floating point errors. And so you have to think about how I can evaluate them. Because the reason why is if, uh, well, let me store this. So x is going to now, well, y, we'll say y is now going to equal 7. Is y equal, equal to 0 0.7? If that is true, uh, y is 0 0.7. Else, and what we know will happen, y is, mm -hmm, string, well, I don't need the string for this, y. Again, we didn't see the 0 0.7 uh, approach because this is a false statement. This number, 0 0.7001, does not equal 0 0.7. <laughs> so what can we do in effect with this? That's actually where we can do approximations. And the entire idea to an approximation is we have some threshold. In this case, we're calling it epsilon. Just it's math because math term says that that means a very small positive quantity. So we're saying basically within some type of plus or minus threshold is going to be appropriate. So 
again, if I did my little subtraction and there needs to be another 0 0.1 here, now what we can do is say, well, first we need to find out if we are, instead of checking to see if it's equal to 0 0.7, instead of seeing that, we're going to see is it within a threshold? Is it close enough to 0 0.7 that we are okay with it? So just to see sort of all of the actions going on here. ABS. ABS is a built-in Python function. It, it already exists. It's for our uh, benefit. But the entire idea is that it's going to produce the absolute value of whatever number we give it. So in this case, I gave it negative 7 it's going to return a seven. Now, the reason why this is important is because if I did something like y minus 0 0.7, I'm gonna see one number and it's gonna be an ugly number, but what happens if I had done 0 0.7 minus y? Oh, well, now it's a negative number. And if we think about what our criteria was, is a negative number less than zero point zero 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 one well yeah that's a true statement so that's technically not true so what we're doing here is again we're going to st establish some epsilon ep yeah that's what i thought it's not epsilon epsilon uh is going to be just some threshold again you can make it as uh rough or fine detailed as you want and then we're saying if the absolute value of our calculated value minus our expected value of 0 0.7 if that is less than our epsilon print y is approx approximate Lee 0.7. And again, that's exactly what we should see. Y is in fact approximately 